people use plastics as, as a habit and what we can do about that. This is because of our Monday blog post, which was called, what was it called? Reducing and reusing why our single use packaging habits matter. So um, if you've got any last minute questions, um, comment in the comments and one of our team, not me, obviously, will um, we'll answer you there. Um, we're really happy to answer any last minute questions that you have at this point. But um, yeah, let's start on this topic by single use packaging, especially at the moment. I mean, we're, we're all living through a pandemic and there is a, a very different shift in our attitudes um, to what is clean and what is not and what what packaging should be used for and it's it's really interesting at the moment because it's sort of in some ways it's muddying um, some of our um, previously lofty held beliefs that you know single-use packaging or plastic shouldn't be allowed in our lives um, and it's an interesting time because we're all beginning to see I think that there's there's a lot of grey in that area and um, while we're definitely not personally advocates for single-use plastic um, it's really interesting at a time like this watching where it's fitting into our lives and our society at large and why and also where where things like responsibility and privilege come into that and I think as um, as people who are trying to reduce their single-use plastic and packaging use and trying really hard not to let it into our homes I think this particular situation that we're all living through right now really throws up some awesomely interesting grey areas into that, yeah. So the main reason we wrote this article about single-use packaging habits is because we wanted to, to reiterate to you and chat about the fact that our relationship with our ecosystems in the biospheres that we live in, um, they are in everything that we do, like everything that we do, and that includes how we how we eat, how we travel, um, how we build our houses, um, where we live, why we live there, and even right down to things like plastic bags and single-use packaging. Um, as we say in the article, there's a big sort of matrix of responsibility and privilege when it comes to single-use packaging, and it's not all on you as an end user. Um, of course, the manufacturing processes could be a lot better, could be made of alternative things, could be not made at all. We have companies that are delivering to supermarkets and into homes um, products and services in a way that uses a whole lot of single-use plastics and doesn't necessarily need to. And as consumers, we do have a certain amount of power to advocate um, for lessening that packaging and also to choose alternative sources and you know maybe it's as simple as buying pasta in a box rather than buying pasta in um, a plastic wrapping if you have that choice so that's part of the responsibility and there's you know an entire manufacturing process where there's all sorts of responsibilities and pollution and crappy choices being made by multinationals which filter through to our kitchens and into our homes and into our <laughs> our children's indoctrine systems endocrine sorry um, but as end users most of us have some form of power in what we can let into our homes and also what we do with the plastics and the single-use packaging that does make it into our homes um, as we say in the article there is a certain amount of privilege here and I want to acknowledge that from the start um, some people living in either food deserts or living without access to fantastic alternatives that we go through in the article and which I'll go through in a minute um, are not as enabled to reduce plastic coming into the home and part of the responsibility I think of anyone who does have the privilege to be able to say okay let's set up a co-op or let's support our local co-op so that we can buy in bulk and therefore don't need to bring all this single-use packaging into our home it is actually part of our responsibility as members of a community 
to try and set up those structures and try and support those structures so that everyone has better access to those sorts of food systems and yeah, a lack of packaging systems. Um, and we're doing that for our families and ourselves and our ecosystem, but we're also doing that for the rest of our communities and, you know, pushing out, pushing back against companies who do use crappy packaging. We are also incrementally assisting um, the people in our community who do not have the choice, whether it's socioeconomic, locational, any of the matrix of where privilege sits. Um, by using our choices as well as we can, using advocacy as well as we can, and creating alternative structures that use far less packaging, we are helping the rest of our community and our broader society to have access to those options as well. So as usual, it's not just about you, it's about your community, it's about your ecosystem and your choices and your actions really matter. And yeah, please do your best. Um, so a lot of us grew up, I certainly grew up with the idea of recycling and that if you sort of recycled all the bits and pieces that came into your house, that that would be enough. And, um, you know, the cans would go one way and the plastic would go somewhere else and it would all end up somewhere wonderful and it would all go back into this big system which remade them and it was a closed loop, basically. Turns out that's not at all true and becoming less and less true in our society as, you know, as systems fall down and the recycling um, just ends up in another part of a local landfill and yeah. There are still many fantastic recycling schemes in place that I'm aware of, but recycling is not the answer really. There's, there's a lot of outsourcing your impact which goes with recycling. You're taking the thing in, you're going, oh, someone else will deal with that and you're putting it over there or sending it back out the door. And you are, you're really outsourcing your impact, um, which we would put to you is not nearly as responsible, again, if you have the ability to do so, to either reduce those sorts of packagings coming into your house and reusing what does come into your house rather than taking in whatever you want and just going, meh, I'll just recycle it and it will be fine. Because oftentimes as we're discovering, it won't be fine. It won't be fine for our ecosystem. It won't be fine for our community. Um, the fact that that stuff got made in the first place is terrible news for many communities wherever that um, those packagings are being created. And then there's the shipping and the everything else. So we would put to you as um, people trying to live a permaculture life that reducing what comes into your house, into your home in terms of packaging is a far better habit to learn to cultivate than simply recycling things. And um, this is really, it is about habits. We're, we're all at different points in our lives and our abilities. And at Milkwood, we're, we're extremely all about the idea of like starting with one little thing that you can change, having a look at it, figuring out how to change it. It might be juice bottles or it might be plastic bags. Figuring out an alternative slowly getting the hang of it, not beating yourself up along the way, just getting the hang of it. And once that little thing becomes normal, a normal habit, then great, that's normal now. Start with one more thing. And this slow buildup of habits which shift your entire household and shift your entire mindset. And, you know, as many, many households do this sort of thing, shift community um, outcomes and values and waterway health and so many other things. But um, right now, especially when there's a lot going on and everyone, including us, is you know a, a bit more stressed and concerned and worried about so many things, this is not at all a guilt trip. This is about going, okay, well, there's a lot going on out there which I don't have any control over and that I can't change and I'm not happy with it, but what do I have control over and what can I change in a positive way and how do I turn that that impetus to create a regenerative community and world how do I use that impetus to change small things in my life which accumulate and end up in a very 
much better place for your household and for your community and for your ecosystem. So that's what this conversation is about. All right, what else? Um, so yeah, so reducing packaging coming into your house is obviously the first stage of this sort of habit. Um, for many people that do have access to food co-ops or um, bulk food stores, use them, use them, use them, use them. Um, if you don't have access to those things, there are sometimes um, mail order systems, which yeah, there's still packaging involved, but if in the total it's less packaging, then you're on the path, you're getting there. Um, farmers markets, CSA, community supported agriculture, veggie boxes, um, there's a lot, even in this time of lockdown, there's a lot of ways that you can start to access um, food or products that you need in a way that just keeping packaging in mind, you can usually reduce what's coming into your home. Okay, so once it's in there though, what do you do with it? You've got all these plastic bags and you've got all these bits and bobs and again, you would be surprised how much can be cleaned and dried out and reused for all sorts of things. And again, it's about that mindset shift of going from like, meh, it's just a plastic bag, chuck it away to going, whoa, that could be used for 20 different things. I don't know what I'm gonna use it for. Is waterproof. It represents a huge amount of embodied energy in terms of, you know, it was an ancient forest, which became oil, which has gone through this huge manufacturing process to turn into plastic and then been shipped around the world to me, to my kitchen right now, and here it is. Okay, well, that's a resource. Um, better wash it out, peg it on the line, dry it out, fold it up, put it in the plastic bags box in the kitchen and wait until I need another one of those. I know this sounds um, a little oversimplified in some ways, but this is where these sorts of habits begin. And this is where the sort of mindset shifting starts. Um, what is really interesting once you start looking at all the single use packaging in your home and in your life is like, some of this stuff is great quality, doesn't seem like the right word for it, but it's like this stuff, it can be reused like for years, right? I've got an example here. Um, so this is, hopefully you can see them and they're in focus. So these are a few little oyster mushrooms which are growing on a bucket of feta. I mean, as in the packaging of the bucket of feta, the feta is no longer in there. It's full of um, mushroom substrate. Um, yeah, so we use these sorts of um, supposedly single use plastics to grow mushrooms in. These ones have just started and they're not all that happy yet, but all these will become beautiful little mushrooms one day, very, very soon. All right, so this is technically a single use piece of packaging. And it's so not, it is, it's fantastic. We will use these for years. We have accumulated maybe 40 or 50 of these four litre um, feta and yogurt bucket buckets now. We've got them from cafes. Um, it's, yeah, we don't drink that much yogurt or eat that much feta and we yeah, generally don't buy it like this anyway. But, so this is a throwaway item which now forms the basis of our home mushroom cultivation unit. Um, completely from something which would otherwise try and get its way through a recycling process, but you know, just as likely end up in landfill. So the, the value that's represented in these sorts of single packaging items, which are, you know, um, sturdy and super, super useful for lots of things, I really encourage you to just sort of reset when you've got stuff in your kitchen that's you know getting washed up and like, can you be bothered? Should it go in the recycling? That's a fantastic container for a whole lot of things. And could, you know, <laughs> one of the downsides of plastic is it will be around for longer than you are. So you have the choice at that point to either keep using it in your house for something or store it away until you need it or send it back out into the world. Again, outsourcing your impact. And yeah, we'd encourage you to keep it in your house figure out what to do with it. I mean, we often barter and swap with people for these sorts of buckets. And yeah, so to us, they're a resource. To someone else, they're a throwaway item. And it's it's all about perspective, really. 
Um, in the article, we also mention um, the, a little food share that's run by our dear friend Sue Dennett at Meliodora in Hepburn in Victoria. And this entire little food share runs on reused, single-use packaging. So people bring in their plastic bags and their, their wrap packets and their ziploc bags that look pretty crappy and have been used for something else. And they bring them all into Sue and their little Chinese takeaway containers and all the, all the different things. And those all get loaded up with um, bulk grains and bulk rice and the bottles get filled with beautiful apple cider vinegar and tamari and all these things. And then that goes back out to the food share where people can take what they need. And the entire system is run exclusively um, on reused, single-use packaging. Sue won't, would never, ever buy um, a, a roll of bags, for example, because she's aware that there's that much um, single-use packaging out there in the community that if it's just cleaned and dried properly, it can be used again, all right? And so, and those, um, those packaging items come back around and around and around. When we lived at Meliodora, and I was helping packing um, the food share at one point, um, one of the packets I could see, it was at least six years old, and it was just, you know, it had, had rice go in it and it had gone to someone's home and the rice had been used up and it had come back and it had been refilled, refilled, refilled. And again, these, these materials are really, really tough and they are a resource and we need to see them as that, partly so that we reduce our dependence on that sort of thing because we already have it in our house. We've just got to see those plastic bags, right? But also with the acknowledgement of that being a resource, I think comes, I don't want to say a reverence for single use packaging because that's not it at all, but a better understanding that the cycle of energy that goes into something as simple as a Ziploc bag is a really intense system. And once it's with us, using it as well as we can and as many times as we can is an acknowledgement of that energy cycle and it's it's an acknowledgement of the craziness of the world but also yeah using what you've got starting where you are and doing what you can with what you have within this sort of discussion we get fairly quickly into sort of the, the no waste thing which is fantastic as a discussion but there's, there's one sort of little corner of the low waste, no waste camp where everything's in cute little, you know, glass bottles and everything's on white painted linen shelves, which aren't made of linen, but you get what I mean. And we would put to you that the, the best version of low waste and no waste economies, home economies, would be starting with the materials and the containers that you have, right? It won't look as pretty in some ways, as a little row of glass jars that are all just the same because you bought the glass jars from the shop. But there's an inherent love inside a pantry that is full of reused objects. And it's, it's a love for the earth, it's a love for your community, and it's, you know, it's, ugh. It gets big very quickly, this sort of stuff. It's an acknowledgement of where we sit in our societies and in this point in history that we have this relationship with these plastics. And yeah, I don't want to get all crazy about it, but I think it's a good way of acknowledging where we are and who we are and what our communities can be in the future if we value what we have rather than always looking beyond to what the next thing is. And yeah, creating as many closed loop systems as we can where resources go around and around and around inside our households and in our communities until those resources have we've squeezed the life out of them and use them as best as we can. And again, that is a mindset shift for many of us and it's something that we would love to see happen more around. Now again, in the context of the pandemic that we're in, some of this of what I'm saying may not it may not work as well for you right now, but this is a long game. This is a really long game. This is not just about this month. This is not just about this year even. This is about the rest of your life and your relationship to the things that come into your household, what you do with them, how you treat them, and how you treat yourself in relation to your ecosystem and your resources. 
So maybe this is a conversation to think about and act upon in a few months time or maybe depending where you are you can start today. Either is fine, what matters is to us is that you start thinking about this sort of thing and figuring out what you can do. Alrighty, I have a few questions here. Okay, can I reuse Glad Wrap? Yes, yes you can reuse Glad Wrap. In fact, there was a comment on the blog which reminded me of um, something that my nanny used to do as well. She would she would wash any small pieces of Glad Wrap or big pieces that use, got used. She would wash them and then she would stick them against the tiles, the splashback behind her sink, and the the um, the Glad Wrap would dry out. The plastic wrap we're talking about here would dry out, and then it would sort of get folded and put in another little section of her kitchen to be reused, which is mind-blowing to most people but that's what she used to do I think she probably went through about one roll of glad wrap every few years as a result of this of this sort of um, attitude towards even glad wrap as a renewable um, not renewable a reusable resource um, alternatively of course there's things like beeswax wraps which are a very simple homemade construction of beeswax and um, resin basically and you put that on um, on cotton calico squares. Um, the, I'll put a link in um, in the blog post for this if there isn't one there already. And yeah, you create a flexible um, airtight wrap which can be reused as many times. You can wash it really easily for food. It's fantastic. And then you know if it completely um, loses it and gets I don't know stuffed up somehow, it goes into your compost instead of into your landfill at the end of its life cycle because it is cotton, beeswax and resin. And that fundamentally in itself is an item worth bringing into your house on that level, I would say. Alrighty, what about the off-gassing of crappy quality plastic bags? Hmm. So when we're talking about off-gassing, I'm assuming you're asking about the fact that, yep, all plastics off-gas and... Hmm. Well, if you are worried about the off-gassing of plastic bags, I would say don't use those plastic bags when you're reusing them for food. Find something else to use them for or don't use them for fresh food. Any plastic bags that come into our house usually um, end up getting used to portion things in the freezer, whether it's um, an you know, oversupply of broad beans or something else like that. That's what they're primarily used for. Plus, there's always a plastic bag or two down the bottom of all of our backpacks so that, you know, when we go down the beach and Asher, our kid, gets everything he's wearing wet again, um, yeah, that stuff can go into the, the wet bag and then it comes home and gets dried out and pegged on the line and then comes back in, refolded and put back in there. Um, if you're not happy about the off-gassing potential of a plastic item, don't use it in food. Find some, find some glass or yeah, find some other way to do it. But I don't think that that potential off-gassing means that you should disregard the item entirely. There's something you can do with it, even if that is just put it aside and yeah, be ready for later. Um, that question actually reminds me back to Sue Dennett at Meliodora and part of our inter-household um, trades because we we're in another household on the property was single-use plastics like Sue would be like do you have five plastic bags and I'd be like oh geez I really need them and we would we would literally barter for <laughs> for various things including um, the use of single-use plastic bags because they are really valuable and useful and yeah, so you'd be surprised what becomes a resource and what becomes a valued resource through this process of starting to value and reuse what you have around you. Hmm. All right, um, we might wrap up, I think, because, yep, this was a short chat. Um, but just to let you know, this, um, this conversation is from a lesson within our permaculture living course where we talk about and support students learning um, a huge amount of new habits and ideas and skills to create a more permaculture life. And it's been so interesting seeing the students that have chosen this reuse and um, reducing as an action in their permaculture action plan. 
and it's been so fascinating watching where people are starting from. Like some people are like, meh, I'm all over it. I'm just going to, you know, do a much better job of reducing and reusing than I already am. And some people are like, oh, but isn't that all a bit dirty and a bit, oh, I don't know, why, why, why wouldn't I just recycle? It's been really fascinating and heartening watching people go through that mindset shift and, yeah, and realize that what we, what we value, we take care of, and what we take care of defines us, really, whether that's a plastic bag or our relationship to our closest wild, wild space. So, yeah, it's something we're thinking about. Anyway, um, we're going to put this video, um, once it's done, back into the blog post so you can watch it there. And yeah, thank you for coming along and thanks for joining us. And we look forward to seeing how you go. Please let us know and we'll see you next week.